partnered by Times Influence. Well, the punchline or the tagline of ET Now is Rise with India. And the best way to rise in India is to participate in the India growth. And the easier way to participate in India growth is to simply bet on Bharat 22 ETF. The NFO opens next week, but what should we expect from the NFO? What is Bharat 22 all about? And why this could be a one-stop destination to participate in the India growth story? Let's discuss that. And more than discussing that, let's actually debate that with the CEO of ICICI Prudential AMC, Nimesh himself. Nimesh, fantastic to have you back on ET now. Markets mm -hmm. are up and you've been hiding. It should be the other We have not been hiding. We have been uh, <laughs> talking to the customers. We have been talking to the distributors. Uh, the business is growing very fast. People are coming in. We believe that the retail investors should be properly informed uh, what they are getting into. A lot of money is coming in and we need to be very, very careful. And as the markets go up, we need to explain big time to the retail investors that as the market goes up, the risk also goes up. So that risk return trade-off has to be understood by the retail investor as well. So a lot of traveling is happening across India and uh, it's great to be in touch with the real India uh, on a continuous basis. But Bharat 22 ETF could be that vehicle or one-stop destination where you can really bet on this ETF or buy the NFO and participate in the India growth story. So let me start with a very simple question. What is Bharat 22 ETF all about? See, the government, when they decided to divest their holdings, this was a unique way instead of, they could have very easily done it. They had, to, they had to just get the institutional investors in and a lot of institutional investors would have gone into the divestment with them. The government's idea was that why don't we get the common man into this, that India growth story should be shared by the common man. So why don't we get the common man involved in this? So this is a unique way that government has decided to divest that instead of giving out the equity to foreign institutional investors, they have decided to do in a way that the common man benefits. So after we got the mandate, there was so much to and fro with the government in terms of selecting those 22 stocks, right? The 20 or the way we have gone about creating index, every stock is something where the government is happy about it. And we are also, as ICC Prudential, we have taken a lot of efforts that the, stock, uh, the sector has been, uh, the, the, the whole... Uh, index has been created uh, along with partnership with the government in terms of selecting each and every stock a lot of efforts have been gone into so just to say that it is why this is that most of this a uh, lot of these companies are anyway our top uh, conviction picks almost more than 25000 crores have been invested anyway by icc prudential in these stocks okay. so that's the conviction that we have had and that's the conviction with which uh, we have selected these stocks Okay, I'll get into the fundamentals of it, but just to clear the air here, this ETF, and we'll talk about the representation now, it's, it's by design, it's not by default. Government had large ownership in LNT or Access Bank, that's why Access Bank, you know, uh, weightage is high. This is something which, you, which your AMC mm -hmm. has designed, it is we, not by default. We, we and the government both felt that we could have 40%, the whole idea was that around 40% could be, we wanted a diversification not only amongst the companies, diversification is there amongst private sector companies as well as government companies. So if you see the holdings for around 40% would be the private sector companies and around 60% is the government holdings. So it was a design, it was designed that way. Okay. Now in India, the ETF route is not very popular. And uh, an NFO of an ETF it may sound easy, but an ordinary investor would say it's too complicated. Uh, this one, the only requirement, the only requirement, anybody who owns stocks will have a DMAT account. Okay. So should we, so we have gone about that, that ETF is the right route in this particular, because it is not only a passive investment. I'll explain why. Though it is an ETF, it is going to be rebalanced every year. Right. So suppose and there are stock sector, stock limits, there are sector limits also. Right. So suppose those limits are hit. Suppose the stocks, uh, particular set of stocks do well and uh, ITC uh, to just uh, give an example, a particular stock, which is at 15 percent, ITC is at 15 percent over here. And suppose that goes up to because it goes up in value, it becomes 18 or 19 percent of the portfolio. Then I have to by the year end, I have to cut that position and bring it back to 15 percent. So though it is a passive one, 
automatic profit booking. So when we say that smart beta is going to come to India or smart beta is coming to India, this is one of the smart beta factors that uh, we have brought it into this fund that we'll rebalance it every year. So profits will be booked and the, you will get the index back on March, every March. So at a very low entry load, one is getting an option to indirectly participate in an ETF where it, there is going to be a dynamic churn every year depending on the market conditions. In fact, there is a positive entry load, right? Mm -hmm. There is a 3% okay. discount that the government has given on shares. Okay. So there is zero, there is no entry load, there is zero. If you give me 100 rupees, you get uh, 100 rupees, but you get that stock at 3% discount. So in fact, it is minus 3% that what uh, entry load is. That means it's a positive thing for the investor that there is no entry load, but they still they get a 3% discount. And their fund running expenses are also very minimal. There are hardly anything of fund running expenses. Is this ETF uh, a good instrument for someone who is in for long haul? For, for you know, 5, 10 years? Or this is more like a cyclical bet which you're taking for 2, 3 years, make your money and get out? We have always believed that investment is for the long haul. So look at the quality of companies in this one. If we go and break the quality, the 40% is the private sector. And these are, even if I have gone for a consumption stock in this, you know our view on consumption stock. This is the cheapest consumption stock possible. We are going into an index which is low on price to book and low on P vis a vis the Sensex also. So most of the companies in this, the way we have gone about selecting, you can say this is a very good value index also. If you look at the quality of companies in that, they are not expensive bets. Whether it is one of the best private sector uh, engineering companies, whether it is a private sector bank or it is the private sector uh, consumption company, all of them co are coming at reasonable price to book and PE ratios. Mm -hmm. So, and even the government companies are the companies that we believe in uh, in this one. And let's see what is the government doing and what the government is planning to do in the near future. All of us know government's thrust on infrastructure is only going to increase. Who will benefit by the government's thrust on infrastructure? Uh, will an engineering company owned by the government of India, will it be designing for the OMCs or not? So there are OMCs, that is oil manufacturing companies. There is an oil exploration company. I think an oil exploration company can be a best hedge against a, a oil price increase. For us, all of us who have got our portfolios, who have got their DMAT accounts, would be owning equities. You, they need some amount of hedge. So, a uh, hedge has also been created. The oil, so a lot of thought has gone in selecting companies. So, we believe the government companies are the companies which will benefit by this uh, uh, India growth. India cannot grow. All of us know that today, when the capex cycle is not there in the private sector, government is going through that capex cycle. If you study the portfolio closely, all these companies are the ones which will benefit by the capex cycle that the government is coming up with, right? We are complaining there is no capex cycle in the private sector. So this is a, these companies will benefit by the capex cycle of the government. So that is the first point. Then if you see the utilities, right? I'm very, we are very carefully and those, they are part of the portfolio. In fact, I've come on your show and talked about yes. utilities also earlier. So utilities are in a phase where their, the capitalization that they will do is more than the capital expenditure that they are going to incur. Yes. And as soon as the capitalization happens in a utility company, the earnings start. So we had in ICC Prudential, we have had that play on uh, capitalization of the utilities and uh, that is playing off. So I think, and this will go on for the next three, four years. It's not that all their capitalization is over. In the next three, four years as their capitalization, we believe there is a substantial, uh, there is a reasonable improvement of profitability possible in those sectors and uh, the government company should benefit out of that. Mm. If this OMCs further expand in a urea plant and all, their engineering contracts have to go to some companies. Yeah. Those companies are also present in the portfolio. Mm. So it, will, it can go either to one government company or a private sector. Both those companies are present uh, in the portfolio. And the big differentiation between this ETF and the earlier, uh, earlier uh, CPSC offering from government uh, is that there are private sector companies here, LNT, Access Bank and ITC. Correct. That is so one there are three difference. private sector in which forms around 40 percent of the portfolio. I was completing on the yeah. government uh, thing. Another factor is that uh, why these government companies, they have been, these are some of the best companies in India which cannot be recreated. These facilities cannot be recreated by anybody. Look at any of the companies, those facilities cannot be recreated in anybody. They were, uh, they were not priced very high because they were, their workings were, was uh, people were worried whether uh, they will work as professionally or not. What we have seen in the last three and a half years 
is increasingly that is becoming a very transparent professional way of working of these companies. Market is still watching them because they have had past experiences where the professionalism may or may not have remained. Here we see a government which is very clear in terms of ensuring that they remain professional and they, they are given that independence to perform. Every tendering that is happening from these people is e-tendering is happening that itself is reducing their cost. So, efficiencies are coming, EPS will not only come from the uh, factors that I told you before on getting more revenue, EPS is also coming from better efficient cost management and that also will grow this one. So, both the factors I think will play over the next 3 to 5 years and we will see a consistent uh, growth in these companies. We at ICIC Prudential are bullish on those companies. And in the group of 22 companies as an AMC, you have 20,000 crore plus of investment already. Yeah. So, like you mentioned that you are indirectly already betting on these companies in different funds. Yeah, we, we, we the, each company that has been selected in this fund with the help of government and there has been uh, almost a six month discussion with the government on how to go about and creating an index. So, I, I feel very proud today when I sit with you and uh, launching this, uh, that this fund has been, this index has been created very well with the help of the government. And 22 companies which are there, all of them have a story to tell. Yeah, story in terms of, yeah, on the, on how their future next three to five years will pan out. Okay. Now, typically markets always follow earnings. I'm sure you must have done some projections as to what could be the projected earnings of this ETF. Or what are expected, you know, yes, aggregate so, earnings? So, every in the sense more than the, it would be at an individual stock level when I said that. So, so, if you see the overall, there are three factors which will indicate what you are asking. One is that there are low price to book and low P, okay. right, today. The future, as I said, the next three to five years when we had set with the government and understood their plans for those companies, we were quite and already we own them, right. Second, another point for that we noted is if you see the dividend yield of this fund, right, it is 2.4 percent is the dividend yield that this fund offers, right, this uh, index offers. So, that is substantially higher. There are some stocks in this uh, fund which have got as high as 5 percent dividend yield. So, I believe that on various parameters that we have chosen, of course, we have the fundamental one would always be that what is the scope of this business for next 3 to 5 years, that is the fundamental that goes, that is why we are owning it already. And that's why we have put it in that index. Without that, it would not have crossed the, that was one of the stopper. If we don't have a positive five-year view, there were, we had to choose from lots of other companies. There were around 80 companies that we had to choose yeah. from. Right? So, I so want to discuss that again. So, hmm. these 80 companies which government wanted to divest, these names and were not just thrown at you. You have decided and you've handfully crafted these stocks and the weightages have been considered. Very, very professionally, the okay. government also was very, very transparent in this, that okay. this is the whole portfolio available. Out of that, let us recreate. We are giving it to the retail investors of the mm -hmm. company. We are, the, the driver of that should not be the 3 percent discount that you are getting in this. The driver should be that we expect a good growth rate uh, on those. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Just a simple, uh, you know, indication to our viewers, the indicative dividend yield which the ETF is promising, uh, will investors get dividend every year by the end of the year? How will it work or will the money go back into the fund? See, the dividends that the fund gets will go to the uh, holders of this uh, shares. So, if you are the holders, the fund is the holder of the shares, okay. the dividend goes to them. Yeah, I am just asking a very basic question yeah, because yeah. then for somebody who is buying the ETF, you should not expect a 2-3% dividend yield check every year. No, 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 that, that, that goes to the fund itself. Exactly. I just wanted to clear the air just for the benefit of our, you know, uh, for our retail investors. Uh, one missing link according to me is that if I look at Nifty, hmm. Nifty has about 40% weightage in NBFC, private banks and financials. This ETF has two or three large concentrated bets, aggregate financial exposure is less than 20 percent. Right. The rise with India, if you want to rise with India, you have to bet on financials. That one can debate on that also. Yeah. There are various so, you know, sectors. The speaks that <laughs> financial inclusion is increasing. There are, there are various sectors that one can bet on. Okay. It is not that it is only, in fact, I would be, in fact, we should have a separate discussion when we are discussing various sectors. I am happy to come separately that if you see froth in some sectors, maybe you should remain away from those sectors. Okay. So, somewhere and when a sector becomes too dominant, 
ET now and ICC Prudential should start worrying about it that the sector, because whenever things go other way around, that sector, whenever, whenever a sector becomes 40% of the index, one should start recalibrating your thoughts on that. So well, I've we learned it from a very good fund manager, his mm. name is S. Narain, mm. that you never get uh, good prices when there is cheery consensus. Mm. Financials is where I think there is cheery consensus. Uh, so there are, in financials, there are various things. There are government banks, there are private sector banks. In private sector, there are retail banks and there are corporate banks. Uh, there are NBFCs. We believe that NBFC space is something where we feel that the evaluations have run away. Have run away because there was a belief that the government banks will not be able to deliver or will not be able to grow and NBFCs will grow big time. While I agree that NB, but it cannot be that five years down the line, all the NBFCs, the kind of froth that you see in the market, that all NBFCs would have done very well in the next five years. I believe there is a play. But uh, even a prominent bank in the country, which is government owned, I think it has got a fantastic business case. That shows even we owned it in ICIC Prudential before and it is part of that portfolio also. We also like uh, in, uh, in, the, in this space, we also like corporate banks who are in every part of the business, right? They should have mutual funds also, those universal bank concept. So universal bank which owns insurance company, which owns uh, mutual fund, which owns uh, uh, general insurance, right? Those are the sectors also that are doing very well. So I think it's a, financials are becoming wider with insurance yeah. companies coming in. Uh, so it's becoming wider and it's becoming more and more in there. But demonetization has really helped these two businesses, whether it is our business mutual fund or insurance uh, business, both the businesses are expected to do well, the kind of uh, flows that we are getting, mm. both of them. Whereas on paper, this sounds like an ETF, but if I look at the proposition, the proposition is that the composition of 22 stocks, they are relatively cheap stocks, or they could be called as value stocks. These are stocks which are not currently the cheery stocks in the market, and these are stocks which essentially are very inward looking. They don't give you a play on exports, IT or pharma. How would you defend these three things? See, this the, definitely this does not have IT and pharma. This is a play on India uh, and IT and pharma. We have said that these are our contra bets, right? There are funds that are available exactly. which contains those sectors only and that we have advocated uh, separately. So we have got a fund which contains uh, export and other services fund which contains IT, pharma and logistics. We love those logistics is a good business and IT and pharma are relatively cheaper. So this is India growth story. India story, the markets can be played in various ways. So that is one way and we believe that is also value. right? IT, pharma and logistics we believe is value. And another way of playing India growth story is these companies which are expected to do well 3 to 5 years. right? I am I'm saying each of this company when we go into the details there is a story in that company why that company we expect to do well in the next 3 to 5 years. So while I am uh, saying that IT, pharma is a contra bet, this is a this is a bet which we are playing with the India group. If India has to do well over the next three to five years, these are the companies which will first do well. That's the thought. The thought of uh, your fund also is that uh, don't buy small cap stocks. Focus on large cap stocks. If at all you want to buy, buy a Flocus blue chip. Mm. Uh, this is a departure from that thought, isn't it? Because if you are saying that don't buy, uh, buy a fund which uh, or buy an ETF, which has uh, no IT pharma, isn't, a depart isn't this a departure from the thought? No, IT and pharma, again I am saying, ICIC Prudential has a supermarket where there are various kinds of funds and each fund will be right for his thought process. How do so I right as an right investor now, I, figure out? First thing, I, so we have never said that uh, always mid cap, I was the one to come in your channel 2013. on 2012-2013 to say that stocks are available at 4 PE, mm. so small cap and mid cap looks very interesting, but that was 2013. Today we feel risk return wise, large cap is much better than mid cap, right? That's Fair the point. that's the between mid yeah. cap and large cap. Second thing, in the phase of market that we are, right? We are in a phase which is not the markets are not cheap. Markets are f more than fairly valued. Where you can say market we are getting into an expensive market. So in an expensive market, this kind of stocks which have yet still not played the game, where the uh, play is still available on this one. We believe that is a good uh, play to do right now. So but it is not contradicting my position. This is I want people to invest in large cap. Mm. These are large cap stocks. These are not mm. uh, this one. I want people to invest in value. This is value. Uh, pharma IT is not there. That I am aware of that. 
but that is a contra play that we are playing in some of other funds, we are not doing it in this one. Mm. Uh, you know, in, in mutual fund industry, we often use the word benchmark. Mm. That is the ultimate comparison for a fund manager. Correct. What should be the benchmark for a fund like this? Because it is an ETF. You cannot map with Nifty because the product offering this is, is an index itself. It is an index, it is an index itself. itself. So what is the benchmark of judging whether the ETF is doing well or ETF is not doing well? So ultimately, this index will be compared when we are come out, coming out with this index. It will be compared with how the diversified funds have done. Okay. Right. So it will be over the next five years. It will be definitely be compared with the diversified funds, and we believe that it can do well. Right. If you see the last five and ten years where the government companies have had not a major run. Still, because of it has done better than if you look take a 10 year pa 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 time frame or you take even a smaller time frame, it has done better than the Sensex also. So, there is a sm element of smart beta in this because we have put in government, it is a, it's a mix. There are government uh, banks, there are government uh, companies as well as non government. So, it is a mix of the both. So, there is a 15 percent of consumption, there is uh, utilities, there is engineering. So, except as you said, IT, pharma, and all the all the other uh, spaces are there. A terminology which you have always focused on is that you know before you capture the upside, focus on the downside, right. which is look at the margin of safety. Can I make a confident statement when I say that look, this combination of twenty-two companies, a combination of large cap, uh, PSUs, and private companies, they offer a decent margin of safety. If markets fall ten percent, they'll fall less. That's what our endeavor has been in selecting the stocks. The margin of safety is the right word that uh, you have used. Every stock that we have looked at it, I think a combination of it, uh, definitely it gives a margin of safety in case of a correction. When you say the uh, ETF would be monitored every year, mm. there would be a dynamic allocation. Mm. Would they be just you know cutting and chopping of large positions or there would be marginal peeling and slicing here or there? Then it's very clearly done how it will be done, that every stock and sector limits, they will be added to. Okay. So if the, um, uh, the companies which have done well, and they are exceeding the this one. We'll have to cut those and come back to uh, the disciplined allocation on that. But will you do that during the year also? No, we have to do it in March. But that's like timing the market, isn't it? We will be doing it in March. Timing the market in the sense, yes. For well. example, if March markets are up or down, hmm. and if allocations change accordingly, you would be faced forced to change a view that time. It won't be that uh, because you are not talking about changing a view from uh, owning 18% in a stock. Suppose it's a 10,000 crore fund tomorrow and you own 18% in a particular stock and the 18 you have to make it to 15, you are talking about a 300 crore. In today's market, in a large cap stock, uh, correcting by 300 crores is not going to make a major impact cost or anything like that. Fair point. Now, this is your first uh, you know, attempt to move into the ETF market and especially the first attempt from a government standpoint. No, 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 let us correct. I mean, at least ICIC has been there in the ETF sky for quite a long no, time. No, I mean it's a CPSC ETF. CPSC. CPSC huh? ETF from the government mm -hmm. side. Would you be exploring more of these opportunities? Would the, are we? Would you be looking at the uh, whole government relationship very, uh, you know, keenly? See, we have been very keen that we give the entire portfolio to our customers. So part of this is part of that that we are very keen that we work with the government on this one, and I am sure uh, the government will also do. I know they have got huge plans on this area, and I am sure this is only the first step that they are moving towards. There will be many more steps in divesting, and if they are, they are there, one of their primary focus is that the common man benefits out of it. So this, in my mind, will continue. This is a huge business opportunity. Well, good luck. Thank you for joining us, thank and hope you. to certainly see much more of you going forward. Yeah, thank you. That's it on the show. It's a wrap from me. Thank you for tuning in. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Partnered by Times Influence.